Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to scroll through a screen of recent breakouts, and this is today's video lesson. I've got about, let me see, 21 stocks to go through. Some of them you know. I see Google is coming up. Some of them are less familiar. And I'm just going to use this as kind of some lessons in chart reading. I'll incorporate a little bit of fundamental analysis, but not too much, not too much. Really want to focus on the charts today. So this is a company called Magnolia Oil and Gas. And by the way, I don't know about all of these companies. Sometimes I just go through and I look at the charts. I look at only the technical action. I do not typically go through and read financial reports, financial statements. I do read a lot of the earnings transcripts from the earnings calls, particularly if it's a stock I'm writing about. That can be of interest because they can tell you some interesting things in there to look looking to the future. But some of these companies I really don't know very much about. I just look at the charts. You can glean a lot of information from the charts themselves, okay? So let's dive in. First thing I see is this is what happens when you have a SPAC. And some of you may have heard of these SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies. They're companies that are formed. They go public. And their purpose is to acquire other companies then and fold them into the SPAC. And sometimes they change the name. So this looks to me like it was something that was a SPAC, one of those special purpose companies. They acquired this Magnolia Oil and Gas back in March of 18. So you see it rallied, rallied. Okay. And then you had... You know, you had the energy slump last year. This is still a fairly recent stock. It's really come back very nicely. Of course, energy prices higher for a lot of reasons. So you see, I do incorporate the fundamental thesis even when I'm looking at a chart. Sometimes you can very easily understand what it is. This one cleared a consolidation. We're looking at a weekly chart, by the way. So you see you had your consolidation over here the weekend of March 12th, high of 1335. I'm going to flip over to a daily, and yeah, you see it, it gapped out of that just recently and has been trending higher. So a lot of this I'm imagining I don't know, but you know, with the increase in energy prices lately, that is going to benefit some of these companies. And one thing to like about this, Analysts are seeing a big increase in earnings per share this year. That's what this number indicates. So that's looking looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to kind of incorporate some lessons into each of these. Okay, on to innovation. Semiconductor. Well, we all know what's happening in the semiconductor industry with the shortages. And this one makes automated and integrated measurement and inspection systems for semiconductor and flat panel displays. Okay, so it's part of the semiconductor equipment industry, which of course is very much related to the fate of the industry itself. You know, as the shortage in semiconductors is now playing out, and I read an article yesterday that this may even continue longer than was originally forecast, perhaps into 2022. That, of course, supply and demand, right? That, of course, is going to raise prices. And also, as some of these companies want to build out their capabilities to address the demand, that could be very good business for companies that service the semiconductor industry, okay? So, yeah, we're seeing down here, analysts expect 65% earnings growth this year to 318 per share, up another 11% next year. Okay. So this one, clear to base, which is really the theme of today's program. You had over here the high of 72.55. That was back on April 6th. So you see it pulled back here and it went into a 22% decline. You see that? And that's not really terribly out of the ordinary, especially because the average daily volume fairly low on this one, it's a mid cap market cap of 3.666, or 0.2 million. So it's, it's a mid cap. So not unusual to see not 
a lot of trading volume on this one. So it did clear that consolidation right back there on May 28th, gapped up, pulled back. Here's what I like here, okay? It found support very nicely along its 10-day moving average. And if you've watched some of my videos, you've probably seen I really like that indicator. And just as a reminder, what that is, is the average of prices over the past 10 trading sessions, okay? So these moving average lines are playing out exactly the way you want to see them. You got your 10-day line above your 50-day line, and you see as it pulled back, you had the 10-day line was below the 50-day. Sometimes these moving average crossovers, they're a, a bullish indicator. And when you have the shorter moving average below the longer one, as you had in this case, that's not good. But when they cross over, that can be a bullish indicator. And I'm liking the support right here. See that? It's just kind of kissing that line, trending along that. So looks very nice right there. I'm going to move on to a more familiar name. Alphabet, we all know it as Google. Okay, so clear to consolidation over here, flat base, which means a decline of less than 15%. And I'm using MarketSmith. If you go back over here, they do show you that information on a daily. So you see this decline was only 7%. And don't forget, we've had some choppiness in the broader market. This is a huge company. Okay, look at that daily trading volume, one. 0.5 million over there. So you've got a lot of a lot of shares trading hands in Google, of course, every day. Big member of the S&P 500, the Nasdaq Composite. So definitely a little different than the one we just looked at, okay? Uh, but you see, this is going to probably track a little more along with market choppiness. And we've had the broader market has been rising recently. Broader market is at fresh highs right now, kind of shaking off any concerns about inflation for the moment, seeming to think it's transitory. So, okay, we'll go along with that for now. Remains to be seen if that thesis is correct. But as of now, you are seeing Google, let's see, had a high. And this is, this is an expensive stock. It's $2,431. And by the way, a higher price stock does not mean it's a better stock. I don't really like these super low price ones, but high is not necessarily better. Okay. So let's see, 24. Yep. See it, it surpassed that point right here. You see it reached 2436 even yesterday. And today it rallied a little more, but is reversing lower. Okay. So that looks pretty good too. And you see what I just said there, in the previous chart about the 10-day moving average, you've got Google very nicely holding above its 10-day moving average right now. Okay, so let's see what we have here next. Okay, this is IDEX Laboratories. And this is a diagnostic testing company for the veterinary market. Yeah, I've gotten some bills from IDEX myself, of course, being no, animal lover, animal hoarder. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. Okay, this is interesting. This is a cup with handle. And let's take a minute and take a little lesson in what this is. This is one of these consolidations that historically has proven very constructive when a company, when a stock does pull into this. So you see IDEX over here rallied to a high back in February, 573.99. And the price doesn't even really matter. I'm really just focusing more on the pattern. So it pulled down here. It kind of traded in a little bit of a tight range. Let me show you the volume. While, while it was pulling back, volume was a little heavier, but then it consolidated. And what happened over here? Volume lightened up. So that's kind of a, a good thing. You didn't have too many volume spikes what that shows you is while it's consolidating, if the volume is kind of muted, that just means that the institutional investors, and yes, that is who drives the market, not these meme stock people from Reddit, okay? Not against them. I, I'm not hating on the meme stock people, but just remember, they don't drive the market. It's the institutional investors. So they were kind of holding steady, just sort of holding shares, not a lot of selling. You can see over here on the cup, where they started to buy up some shares. Okay, you saw, hey, the price is low, let's buy these. And a lot of these today, they're driven by algorithms uh, or at least a combination of algorithms and a person 
perhaps there are there are traders at the mutual fund companies there are actual human beings who do use some judgment and discernment but they also rely quite a bit on their algorithms and their screens okay so you see that's the cup part pretty self-explanatory the handle part now that's where you kind of rallied up here didn't quite make it to the new high you can have a handle that surpasses the high that would be a high handle uh, but this one did not pulled back now this second pullback back when i was learning these patterns i had a hard time with this one because i said well why is that positive it just means they the stock was rallying and then they decided to sell off what you have here are some institutions that again their screens their algorithms probably tell them hey you know we kind of made back our money before the sell-off and you can see that here right you can see they made back their money before that sell-off so now they're going to take some profits what that is called is shaking out the weak holders okay it's the ones that maybe are lacking a little conviction or just want to take some profits just want to take some profits in the stock you know one thing we're seeing now after the big rally that began last year back in april and just kept going kept going after we came out of that initial covid correction and you see that on this stock right here after that we're now kind of past the one year holding mark that you're kicking in long-term capital gains so not so surprising for that reason too to see a little bit of selling as we go along here okay so what happened then the stock the cup with handle buy point was the high of the handle was 56 51 561.52 back here on april 30th and yeah so it's definitely 565 565 so it definitely broke out of that consolidation uh let's see over here when it cleared that point you did have some above average volume it's been rising a little lower weekly volume let's pop over to a daily and just take a look at it okay so you had a big gain yesterday it's holding on to that today yeah volumes volumes eh, not so great but but that's okay you, you, you can't have that heavy volume every day but ideally when when a stock does make a big gain or clear a buy point you would like to see heavier volume and you kind of had you had some of that um no well, not too much a little heavy volume there but it didn't clear the buy point so anyway this is looking good i mean yeah would you like to see the volume a little better ideally sure but but that looks this looks like a good stock so far liking what i'm seeing there earnings estimates looking good ahead we can jump over take a look at i'm gonna pull this down so we can see it a little better and uh, earnings earnings look pretty good so i'm gonna i'm gonna fix that again sorry i had my had my recording settings uh in a way that you can't really see the earnings growth so much but in the recent quarter it was up 73 percent sales were up 24 percent yay for pet diagnostics okay let's see proof point okay so huh, computer security all right so oh, okay this is an interesting one yeah this was just acquired i remember this by thomas bravo that is a uh, private equity firm that's what this is that was not some big gap up just due to some wonderful earnings report although their earnings were pretty good okay uh but that's not what this was when a stock is acquired like that it jumps up really high it's not tradable at this point it's not going to go anywhere you're you're not going to see a gain from that it it's just don't even buy it this is where charts come in say you read something terrific about proof point and you read that it was being acquired perhaps or that it's a great business and then you think hey well let me jump in and buy this no you can't you can't you can't and that's just the ai see that flat base right there depth two percent that's just the ai in the chart program telling you that there's nobody going in saying hey it's a flat base let's see if it clears that no you don't want to do that okay that's a good little lesson there dropbox you know i i used to use this this company quite a bit i don't anymore i'm 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 using um the google storage much more at this point storage really has been commoditized 
And you see here, ever since this went public in 2018, rallied to a high in June 2018, has never come back to that at all. Now, that's okay because we're three years down the road. You kind of reset your base count maybe after about a year and a half or so. I don't really like this, though. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> Wall Street has feels a little bit better about this stock than I do. 46% earnings growth expected this year, 12% in 2022. You know, I could be wrong. And definitely it did break out of a base. You had a 15% consolidation over here. You see it kind of bases, rallies a little bit, goes up, bases. I mean, you are seeing higher highs and higher lows. So it's not anywhere here. It's not undercutting its prior structure low. See that? So there's where it rallied. So the structure low is over here at 2408. That was from the weekend in May 14th. You had over here, your structure low was around 2166, we'll call it, you know, 2157 right there. Okay. So you see that held above that and this one held above that. Okay. So you're continuing to see that. Now over here, you see where there it undercut its prior structure low. What was that? Oh, that was March 2020. Okay, we're just going to ignore that. Uh, but it did clear this structure. Eh, I just, I, I don't, I, I just don't like the company. I don't like the company. Um, I could be wrong, but just, it's, it's all commoditized right now. Okay, Dell. <laughs> I've, I've been, I, I, I've been a Mac person for so long now that I sort of forgot about Dell, but you know, let's, Let's look at the at the earnings expectations before I jump into the chart. So, okay, there's some growth expected, 8%, 2%, not bad. Uh, right here, the number of mutual funds holding the share. I mean, it's huge, right? It's a huge S&P 500 component. And I do know that Windows has a much better uh, foothold when it comes to corporate and enterprise rather than small business, where I've been kind of more in the small business environment for many years now using Mac. So we have a flat base here. I'm going to just pop over to a daily chart. By the way, there's a little lesson inherent in me flipping back and forth between weekly and daily, which is to show you how you can use both when you're analyzing a stock. So this breaks it down on a little more granular level. You can see that high of 103.80 back on April 19th. So 103.80, we're kind of looking for the day. Yeah, so it cleared that back here. Uh, cleared that on June 7th, so just uh, just a few days ago. And again, remember, support along that 10-day moving average. This was a very... Uh, pretty shallow. Well, it looks, it looks shallower than it was. It was 9%, but that's still a pretty shallow flat base there. And you see, this is nice. It came back. You see the red line there being the 50-day line. What happened? It tagged that line, got support right there. What that shows you, I keep talking about the support at the moving averages. Why is that important? Is It's a sign that the investors, the big institutional investors, are not just saying, we're out of here. It's time to take profits. Let's sell. So back here in October and November of 2020, it sliced through that 10-day line, the green, sliced through the 50-day, the red, did find support nicely above that 200-day moving average, the black line. But you do see that's where it sliced through some support and actually kind of undercut kind of the prior structure low. Let me go back to a weekly and we might be able to see that a little better. Yes, yeah, so that's from October and November. You had a tight area in here. These tight areas are great because it can represent another takeoff, right? Terrific. So what was the low down here? 58, 11, and we held above, held above that other structure low. So that's good when you see that. Higher highs, higher lows, okay? So that was a higher low. Okay, so we're in a flat base now. Uh, it did clear that point, but it's kind of trending right around there. Okay, 
So let's see here. We got Dropbox, Dell, uh, let's see. Trace Medical Concepts. Not sure what this is. It's pretty small, just kind of barely out of out of the small cap stage. Just went public. Just went public back in April. Okay, so uh, orthopedic medical devices, co-develops equipment for surgical equipment of Halix Valgus. I don't know what that is. Uh, but it's a medical company, and a lot of these, they go public to raise capital, of course, for, for their research, for their projects. They're often acquired by some bigger company eventually. So that's kind of a new one, cleared its first post-IPO consolidation. And that's about all I got to say on that one. This one needs a little more time to play out. I, I'm not... Uh, not sure about this one yet. Give it a little more time. And also, I'll tell you something. Wall Street's expecting continued losses here. So, not not great. Okay. We've got Oventive. Okay. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. This is another natural gas company. You see that? Cleared a cup with handle. Let's pop over to a daily. And you see there's your cup, right? There's your cup shape. Now, your handle should ideally take place over five sessions. You have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, see? It was much more than five, actually. And when I say it take place over five sessions, a minimum of five. Okay, I did not mean exactly five. I meant a minimum of five. So even though the AI kind of sloppy line, I would have drawn the line a little differently if I were a human being doing it. And you see it cleared that cup with handle right back here, June 1st, trending above that 10-day line. Looking good, looking good. Good earnings expected. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, that's that's not bad. And that's, that's one of these that's little known. You know, a lot of these stocks, nobody knows anything about them. Oh, well, I mean, the investors do. But they don't get a lot of public attention in the media. Uh, okay, very small, see, very small cap, 847.1 million. This is a bank based in Brockton, Massachusetts, so it's a regional bank. Yeah, okay, yeah, flat base, flat base, yeah, okay. Um, you know, small caps can be a lot more volatile. This one's not so bad. Beta of 0.77. There's so many regional banks, though. It's just very hard for me to get excited about any any individual one. But on the chart here, you see, cleared a flat base, jumped up. It's now in another flat base, jumped up. So I'm showing you why I think you can see why these areas of consolidation look pretty good. Now, the AI is calling this a cup with handle. That's the kind of thing that used to drive me nuts. Used to drive me nuts when I was when I was first learning how to do this, and I was actually a writer at Investors Business Daily, and it took a it took a long time to really master this. I used to worry about things like that. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter if it's a flat base or a cup with handle. You can make an argument for both. There are some that are a little bit ambiguous. So see, I got a good lesson out of Harbor Own Bank Corp here. Did not expect to do that, but I did. So if it's a little bit ambiguous, don't worry too much about it. Okay, in mode. This is Israeli seller of radio frequency device. Oh, cosmetic surgery, I guess. Cosmetic procedures slash women's health. Okay, okay. Oh, this is nice. This is a nice chart. So it went public back in 2019. And so it's very new. So you see here, rebounded nicely. Just nice, solid rebound. This kind of reset the base count over here, the 2020 big pullback. And we started out here resetting the base count. Cup, what happened? Jumped out of the cup. Then you had another very sloppy consolidation. It was down 20%. You can see that there. Uh, so not a flat base. Look at that, though. Cleared the consolidation. Support. We're on a weekly chart above the 50-day line. We've now got a cup with handle, and it looks like it did clear that handle buy point. Just going to give a quick look over here at the daily. Yep, cleared that handle buy point the other day. So I think you're getting the point of why some of these consolidations can be 
just extremely, extremely constructive. Okay, here's a bigger company. This is Vale. This is a mining company. Look at that. Market cap, $114.54 billion. It is based in Brazil, so it's not part of the S&P 500 for that reason. Good earnings expectation next year. Analysts see an earnings decline in 22. Not too worried about that right now. Uh, you see, cleared a cup with handle, broke out. You had little, little kind of flat area on there. Let's pop over to the daily. Oh, okay. So a little pullback, but it was a pretty minor consolidation, finding support along the 10 the ten day line. Let me just go back over here, take a look at this. So would I consider this one to be in buy range right now? Let's take a look. So it cleared the cup with handle. That's a second stage base. There was... There was uh, a variation of a first stage base. There was your first stage base right there, coming out of the big 2020 downturn, rallied, pulled into a, not really a second stage base because it did not rally enough. So almost like a rally, then a continuation of the first stage. Boom, big rally right in here. You had some earnings, cup with handle, broke out of the cup with handle. So... Yeah, so you've got a second stage base right there. This one could be getting a little long in the tooth. Not too bad. You might have a buy opportunity at this point. You're looking for something to surpass that previous high, 2302. Let's take a look at the volume. Heavy volume is a good indicator as the stock moves up. Yep, see that? So it gapped higher on this session. I don't know what happened back here, okay, why it did that, but it did. Heavy volume, heavy volume, you see that back here. Some days of heavy volume as the stock was moving higher, support along the 10-day line. So that's looking pretty good as well. What else we have here? We've got a few, a few more. Haverty Furniture. Furniture is getting more expensive. Did you know that? Along with everything else, it's part of the... Uh, just part of this big inflationary play we're in right now, commodities, shipping. So everything's getting more expensive. This one cleared a little flat base. Doesn't look so flat, but as you see, the decline was only 15%. So we're going to call that a flat base, and that's pretty good. It broke out of that one. We have a little heavier volume this week, which is good. So they've got a furniture store. This is a small one too, Okay. 849 million. I'm not against the small caps per se, not at all. In fact, they can over time return more than larger companies. That's what's called the small cap premium. Now, there's some debate over whether that exists to the extent that it used to because U.S. large growth stocks have done so well in the past decade or so, uh, but historically that does remain true. So, nothing against small caps per se. You just want to be careful. And here we go. Analysts expecting earnings to double next year. All right, that looks good. What do we got? Oh, J2 Global. This is an old one. I remember this one back from when I worked at Investor's Business Daily. Look at that. IPO was in 1999. I, I joined Investor's Business Daily. in. Uh, I first started working for them in 2000 as a freelancer. Joined the company in 2001. And this was one of those red, hot, brand new growth stocks back then. So it's more mature right now. Still uh, is a mid cap market capitalization of uh, 5.793 billion over there. Still qualifies as a mid cap. You have this little now. There, AI is calling that a cup with handle. Let's pop over to a daily, get a little better glimpse at that. Okay, I see it here on a daily. See, this is why you've got to go back and forth between weekly and daily. So you see the handle, the cup formation rather, right over here. There's the handle, right? And you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I think it, uh, yep. So it broke out kind of on the ninth day there, finding nice support along that 10 day moving average. Let's just see how many and, you know, when I say a stock's getting long in the tooth, you don't want to see too many repeated base patterns because eventually investors get fatigued. You might get into a sell-off. And you want to just be careful 
of you have if you have sort of the fourth time around of a company forming a fresh base. So I guess the AI is calling this a big cup with handle here. I can I can see that. Or you could also maybe call that a tight area or maybe a flat base. Either way, see that's what I mean. There's still some ambiguity. All right, we have Lamb Research. Oh yeah. So this is another big company. It's a semiconductor maker, U.S. based. And of course, you know, it's actually a semiconductor equipment maker is really what it is, wafer fabrication. You know, again, this this industry is is doing pretty well right now. Again, just because of the shortages and what does that mean? And, you know, that can cut both ways. If there's shortages, that can cut into sales, but it can also mean higher higher demand. They can fetch higher prices, as I said before. Okay, so we've got a consolidation here, corrected 17%. It's not really in any kind of pattern. You might call it a cup. We can go over here on a, on a daily. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, you can kind of call that a cup shape. And may, remember I was talking about a high handle? So that passed a buy point of 669 over here. You rallied to 673 on June 1st, now pulling back. Could you potentially call that a high handle? Yes. Yes, you could. And you might be looking for that to clear that 673.80 buy point again. So that's a look at Lamb Research. And we've got Diamond Back Energy on a daily. Okay. Long cup with handle over here. Okay, you see that? You had a high point over here, 88.75. It rallied to a high of 87.59, hit some resistance, pulled into a long handle over here, gapped up, heavy volume on the gap up. And then what we have is it kind of kind of traded in a little bit of a flat pattern. And it's now pulled up, found support at the 10-day line. I'm going to look at this on a weekly chart. You know, it, it looks pretty good. It's it's struggling a little bit at this point, and you see volume is low, even though it did clear that, clear that consolidation over there. So a little bit, little bit of a mixed bag. The earnings earnings potential looks very good on this one. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily. This doesn't say to me you must jump in and buy this at this point. I'm a little leery of the energy space anyway, just because of you know, how how tied it can be to so many things that go on in the broader macro economy. And you can you can really get yourself uh, in a bind with some of these. Okay, rent a center. Um, rent to own. I just have a problem with this business model in general because they kind of, to me, they prey on poor people the rent to own business. I don't like it. I'll show you the consolidation, but I don't like the company. So you've got, it's not a flat base because it fell 18%. It did clear that one. And, uh, you know, we're seeing pretty, pretty good earnings growth ahead here. I'm moving on because I just, I just don't like that business. Sorry. I'm moving on. Hilltop Holdings. Okay. So this is another regional bank Holding company for Plains Capital Bank, serving Texas through 65 offices, market cap of $3 billion. Got a cup with handle over here. Let's look at this on a daily. That might be a little more helpful. So you had a cup with handle. You can see that right there. It cleared that. Eh, kind of struggling along. Eh. You know, you can see these patterns, right? You can see what happens here. And let me go back to a weekly. Let's just do a little... Okay, oh, this is one we haven't seen because the market hasn't really been conducive to this lately. But back in November, kind of around the time, October, November, before the election, well, this was actually, this began back in August, close enough, October. The market did get a little choppy, a double bottom base right here. So you had a pullback, it rallied. Didn't quite make it to the prior high, pulled back again, undercut that first low, okay? So the second pullback within the pattern undercut the first low in the pattern. Again, very constructive. These double bottom patterns can be quite constructive. Rally, 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 and then pulled into a cup with handle recently. 
So, you know, that's okay. Not bad. Analysts see an earnings decline in this one. I'm not sure why. I don't quite understand the story of this. I do just know that it's a regional bank in Texas. The chart looks good. Profitable, but profitability is seen as declining. And we're going to just move ahead. So this is WSFS Financial, another regional bank, okay? Holding company for Wil- Wilmington Savings Society, operating in 118 offices in Delaware, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Nevada. Okay, somebody bought a house in Vegas, one of the bank officers, and we now have a bank in Nevada. <laughs> Sometimes that's how that stuff happens. Uh, okay. You know, again, we got a mid cap here. We got a flat base that was constructive, rallied out of the flat base. We got a cup with handle now. Uh, we had a consolidation after the great 2020 decline, kind of rallied out of that. You know, it struggled. It struggled moving out of the big 2020 decline, but eventually in November of last year started rallying higher. Profitability. You know, I don't know. It's hard for me to get excited about all these regional banks because, again, there are just so many of them. And that's where you need to dig in and learn the story. That is where the story comes into play. I can do that on another day. Today, I just really wanted to focus this on showing you some charts. All right, last one I got for you today, Sterling Construction. Provides heavy construction and building services for transportation and water infrastructure. Well, there's a there's a key word right there, infrastructure, right? Um, you know, are we seeing some optimism on what might happen if, if this bill does ever get through Congress? I don't know. Are we just seeing some basic optimism about construction in general? I don't know, because this doesn't seem to be involved in residential construction right now. Had a long consolidation over here. Very small company, $693.7 million. Eh, eh, I'm not, 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 I, I, I don't, even though, yeah, I get it. So, yeah, we can show the same, same thing, right? Clear to cup pattern, broke out, clear to cup. And we had, we had higher, higher highs, higher lows. Little pullback over here, broke out again consolidation. I mean, this thing kind of steadily moves higher. That is true. I don't know the story here. And based based on the chart, just based on what I see in terms of the market cap, I'm, I'm not terribly excited, particularly because there can be a lot better opportunities right now. But I think you get the point. That's all the stocks I have for you today. I think you get the point. These chart patterns can be very, very, very constructive. And we're very fortunate right now that we have AI that can help you identify these. Back in the day, back when I learned this, we had to pick out every single one ourselves, okay? Um, And you can get pretty good at it. I can actually do this myself now, just looking at another chart program like Stock Charts or Trading View, and I can find them without the AI. But I do think if you're learning... It is pretty helpful. Okay, thank you for watching today. I appreciate you. Hope you learned something. And I will be back with another video lesson soon. Thanks.